I had the opportunity of having a one-on-one -on -one that I could classify as up close and personal through a couple of meetings with this mannerly, humble, benevolent, shy and welcoming pastor usually referred to as man of God, Papa, Prophet or T.B. Joshua for the very first time around about 2005 or 2006. No, I was not there for spiritual assistance. I was planning um, a documentary about him and his vineyard. I became very interested in him after meeting with um, a couple of his mates, one at early life, who had volunteered some first-time information during my research and journalistic investigation with them. One of them was my handyman who went to the same church with T.B. Joshua before he, that is T.B. Joshua, set up his own church and whom he claimed helped him to stop smoking through spiritual intervention. When I got to the appointment, which was at the church, he was not there, but left instruction that I should be kept comfortable till he arrived. I was taken to an upper room, usually referred to as um, presidential suite, by three people who took turns to look after me. Daniel, who I believe is now one of the active pastors at the synagogue, Church of All Nations, a gentleman whose name I have forgotten, but claimed to have hailed from Ibadan, and a young lady. They took turns to stay with me while I was in the upper room. The upper room or presidential suite looked like a typical Nigerian middle-class sitting room. Nothing extraordinary. It was decked with an air conditioning equipment, customary settees and blown up pictures of VIPs, including heads of state being welcomed to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Skuan, by T.B. Joshua. Also conspicuously hung on the wall in this room was a photo of Pastor Evelyn Joshua, T.B. Joshua's wife. I was there for about six hours, six hours. 12 noon till about 6 p.m. I was offered beverages and when it was time for lunch, I was brought a menu to choose from. Nice food. I would crave your indulgence to refer to TB Joshua as TBJ from here on while I acronymize the name of the church as Skuan. TBJ eventually arrived and made me welcome. He apologized vehemently and unreservedly for the delay which he attributed to an urgent journey he had to undertake that morning. He welcomed my idea of a documentary after asking a few questions. Very soft-spoken and attentive. Rather than giving a straight yes or no answer to my request, he requested I gave him sufficient time and that I should come back afterwards for his decision. It was on a Thursday. He then asked if I would be available the following Sunday so I could attend the Sunday service and thereafter have further chat about the proposal concerning the documentary project. I told him I was available and he gave me a signed slip of paper, which he asked that I presented to an usher if Daniel was not available, as Daniel had, at that time, taken over the duty of a chaperon who was chaperoning me around the premises. He gave me a bag full of documents, including videos and his book. As soon as I showed the sleep he gave me on Thursday to one of the ushers at the church entrance. We were immediately taken to the front row 
that is the area where TBJ usually stood while preaching. During the service, there was an intermission or hiatus when TBJ left for a long corridor and we followed. I cannot remember if we were asked to go with him as only a few of us or those of us seated in that special area left the service and followed him. In the corridor were many people with one ailment or another with posters informing of their individual problems. Wonders happened. Two caught my daughter's and my attention most. Olusha, I know my daughter was about 15 years old then. One of the wonders was where a pregnant woman who was overdue the delivery of her baby had been told by the maternity hospital she attended before coming to Skuan that she would have to look for a huge amount of money for a cesarean operation as she was carrying um, a breech baby. That is a baby lying bottom first or feet first in the womb rather than the usual head first position. TBJ Stanley faced the pregnant woman and stretched his right arm towards her. While he slowly turned his hand clockwise, we could see the shape like a baby in the tummy of the woman moving with TBJ's hand direction until it got to about 180 degrees. No sooner had this happened than the woman gave birth to a bouncing baby. As if that was not enough, there came the turn of a footballer whose leg has broken in a few places due to an accident as he stated on his poster. TBJ stretched his hand towards the leg and started bending his hands in various directions while we started hearing crackling noises. We later got to know that it was the bones coming together that resulted in the rattles as the man who was on a wheelchair got up and started jogging and springing around. After this church attendance, I had some regular appointments at his prayer mountain by a big pond or stream not far from the church in an area called Egbe. The place has plants and monkeys and speedboats and a very serene environment with infrastructural developments all over the place. We were able to have quick chats after each prayer session attended by a lot of people, which usually ended with him inviting me to the next prayer meeting most times on the prayer mountain. There was usually food park and drink after each session. I later found it arduous to see him as he did not keep to our appointments a few times. While if I saw him at his prayer mountain, it was a tall order to corner him after the prayer service. I took this for a no and stopped visiting. I had been reliably informed that he had hardly granted interviews at that time. I took the evasiveness or elusiveness as the reason. Or could there have been another reason considering all the accounts by people claiming to have known him well? Prophet T.B. Joshua, June 12th.
Prophet TB Joshua's last words. Let's watch and pray. One life for Christ is all we have. One life for Christ is so dear. Emmanuel, God with us.